On April 1st, Israel struck the Iranian embassy complex in Syria and killed General Mohammad Reza Zahedi, who oversaw Iran's military operations in Syria and Lebanon. Iran is pledging revenge tonight, accusing Israel of attacking its embassy complex in Syria and reportedly killing at least seven Iranian military officials. That includes a top general. Two weeks later, Iran launched drones and missiles towards Israel after vowing retaliation for the Israeli strike. Iran announced its attack on Israel five hours in advance. But why did Iran announce it? And why give Israel a chance to withdraw its high-valued assets from vulnerable bases? First of all, let's acknowledge the reality that Iran started its attack by launching the slowest, loudest weapons in its arsenal, the Shahed drones. They did this to send a signal to Israel, the United States, and everyone else that they were attacking Israel. So, they were not looking to carry out a lethal attack. Iran was essentially saying, here we come, shoot us down, and indeed, they did. Israel and the United States shot down the drones. Now Iran launched tens of millions of dollars worth of drones, while the United States and Israel spent billions of dollars shooting them down. This financial aquarium is unsustainable, and that was one of the points that Iran was making you can't afford this kind of war. The Iranian government has established a publicly discernible policy on deterrence. They have let Israel know, and in not just Israel, they have let the United States and every other nation in within missile range know that there will be a heavy price to be paid if you attack Iranian soil. That Iran will not tolerate the kind of attack that took place the Iranian consulate in Damascus. And now Iran is also putting a marker on the table that says Iran will no longer tolerate, with assassination of nuclear scientists on its soil by Israel. In the future, if you choose to attack Iran, Iran will retaliate and they will retaliate with the kind of force that cannot be interdicted. The Iranians were very clever in the in, in creating this posture, in that all they had to do is show a proof of concept. A lot of people were saying, well, they didn't destroy an airfield. They didn't destroy an Israeli headquarters. They didn't kill hundreds or thousands of Israelis, that because they weren't intending to, they were simply letting the Israelis and the Americans know that they have the capacity to destroy, for example, an airfield. Israel has the most heavily defended airspace in the world, with the most sophisticated anti-missile technology deployed in depth. However, they couldn't stop the Iranian missiles. What Iran did not only put Israel into check, but also created a foundation for peace and stability in the Middle East by eliminating some options that Israel and the United States may have been considering down the road, such as a preemptive strike against Iranian nuclear facilities, or a punishing attack against the Iranian regime. The United States and Israel are now on notice that if they attempt something like that, the price they will pay will be prohibitively high. There are a couple of things that may we're going to see. Firstly, maybe we are going to witness Israel ratcheting up the pressure on Hezbollah. Now, we're going to have to observe the skills of Hassan Nasrallah and his ability to manage this escalation ladder, which he's done so masterfully. However, more pressure is going to be put on Hezbollah by Israel, and Iran is going to be pressuring Nasrallah not to allow it to blow up, not to allow it to become the general war that Netanyahu so desperately needs. Iran doesn't want to distract attention away from the fact that Hamas is winning, that Hamas has turned global opinion against Israel, that the world is now talking about a Palestinian state in ways that they had never done before. A larger war between Israel and Iran distracts people from that that goal. And Iran doesn't want that. Iran understands that the axis of resistance together with Hamas was in the process of strategically defeating Israel. And that's the fight they want to fight. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing and giving it a thumbs up.